Hey folks, and welcome to the Trucking YouTube channel. Today's exciting because I have a brand new pickup truck to show you, and it's not often that we get to say that. Behind me is the Ineos Grenadier Quartermaster, just revealed, and I'm going to tell you all about it. So I'm here today at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. That's where Ineos just revealed this new Grenadier Quartermaster. But up there, you can see just the standard Ineos Grenadier SUV. So that was the first product to launch, but now they've chopped the back off it and made a pickup truck. And that's right over here. I'll show it to you right now. So yes, a lot of the specs stay the same. Both these vehicles use BMW sourced engines. Uh, you can either get a three liter twin turbo V6 gas engine or a BMW diesel. The diesel will not be coming to North America, so sadly not too much point in talking about it. But yes, powertrains stay the same. Both of them are hooked up to an eight-speed automatic from ZF. But of course, everything back here is what's different. So this truck has a cap on it, a soft-sided cap as well, just a little accessory there. The first thing I noticed, this is a composite plastic material very similar to what Toyota uses and it does have a little bit of grit to it so it might not be too slippery although it'll definitely be kind of slippery you might want to get a bed mat in there another thing you're gonna notice yes a full-size spare tire mounted in the bed the bed actually has this little indent there to carry it there's one on both sides so I guess you could carry two spares as well and that's a nice spot for the spare tire because as most truck owners know usually it's down underneath the bed and that can be in the pain in the butt to get to especially in an off-road situation so the way you see the truck here this is the only way you can spec it this bed is 61 inches long and 63 inches wide so just over five feet pretty standard for uh, north american pickup trucks especially mid-sized pickup trucks and uh, this tailgate Ineo says is rated for 275 kilograms, so yes, they are ready to take some weight. Now down below, of course, this thing is also ready to tow. The tow rating doesn't change on the truck. This truck is still just rated at 7,700 pounds of towing, although the wheelbase is longer. The wheelbase has been stretched compared to the SUV, so assumably in the real world, this vehicle will tow better because it has that longer wheelbase to it, which is kind of nice. All right, Oliver, well, I'm excited to see your brand new Quartermaster pickup truck. And I think the first question I have for you is just, you know, why a pickup truck? Why did Ineos think that the Grenadier should be made into a truck? What was the, the philosophy? Oh, I, I think it was, all, yeah, it was clear from the beginning. Yeah, so we started with a station wagon, um, but from the beginning, there was a clear request from the market with the market intelligence from our product team that, uh, yeah, the market is, uh, is asking for a pickup as well. And, and so we said, yeah, a station wagon fits to our idea. A pickup fits absolutely to, idea, uh, to our idea as well. And then uh, we, we went into the concept phase. Yeah, we, we did both kind of in, in parallel. And then at some point in time, we concentrated on the station wagon and uh, finished the station wagon and said, okay, let's, let's bring the pickup a little later. Got it. Um, so then just major differences between the pickup and the wagon. I know they're fairly similar, but there's a couple little things. Do you know off the top of your head what the, all the differences are? Yeah, for sure. So um, we have a double cab cabin. Uh, the seating position is like the, the N North Pole one seating position. So it's not exactly the same seating position like in the station wagon. Uh, and, and we did it uh, because we said focus for the pickup is loading, it's working. It's not a focus, it's maybe not having the family with you all the time. So sure. we give away a little from the interior space on the second seat row to get more uh, space for the loading bay. Yeah, um, we. You can maybe maybe you can see that um, we have a different wheelbase, yeah? so different wheelbase by around about 305 uh, millimeters longer. Uh, is, is the overall vehicle longer or is just the wheelbase? No, no, stretch? absolutely. Yeah, the, the vehicle is almost 500 mils long, longer. Got it. Yeah, so you have the 300 in between the axles. You have 200 more overhang in the back, and that's uh, because of the size of the loading bed. Yeah. Um, so obviously with a pickup truck, the first thing in my head is always towing and payload. Those are always a big deal. So, and I, I can put the numbers up, but more so than the numbers, what did you guys do to make sure this vehicle could haul a lot of weight and tow a decent sized trailer? I think uh, in, in general, we are still limited uh, uh, with the seven tons. Uh, so we said three and a half tons for the vehicle, three and a half tons for the trailer. And that was still 
our, our spec also for the, for the pickup. Mm -hmm. um, there, there were a lot of discussions inside of the team because of payload. You want to have as much as possible payload for the, for the pickup. Sure. But uh, we also said we will not compromise the, the off-road capability of the vehicle. So therefore it was not like, okay, we will take out a lot of weight, compromise off-road capability, but give more payload to the customers. Uh, we decided uh, off-road capability is still priority number one. number one. Yeah, and then you still have a decent payload. You have more than 750 kilograms. Um, that's uh, still a lot. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, this is almost my curiosity more than anything. Did you guys look at a leaf spring rear suspension at all? Sort of classic pickup truck? Or once you already had the shock and the coil spring, did you just say, that's good, we'll leave it alone? I'm just curious. Um, Honestly, we, we never had any prototypes uh, with a different uh, chassis setup. Yeah. It was clear from the beginning, yeah, so we wanted a kind of up-to-date uh, chassis setup. We were very confident that this also gives us the best uh, possibility to be very good on-road and not compromising off-road. It's, it's always uh, kind of... Uh, um, the balance, the, right? the balance, the thanks. Balance. Thanks for giving the word. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's always a, a question of a balance. Sure, but it seems yeah. like in every case, off-roading was always, you lean towards off-roading more than anything. Right? Yeah. Beside one thing, uh, first priority for everything was safety. Sure, yeah. of course. Safety was, yeah, safety, that, that was clear. That was the, the main direction from the beginning. But then, for sure, everything what we did was uh, built on purpose, off-road capability, that is our niche. And all, all decisions that we made, uh, we always thought about, okay, is it still made on purpose? Is it off-road capability? Um, and I think we finished that quite cool. good. Do you know timing on the truck when it's coming to North America? Um, uh, I cannot uh, tell you an exact date. Okay. Uh, we will start producing uh, the first pickups end of this year, okay. but starting with the European market. Sure. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think we're starting in the uh, UK starting in uh, UK, Germany, Austria, and I think France. Um, probably it's something around four to six months later for the US. Got it. Honestly, yeah, you, you really need to drive the vehicle to really fully appreciate the vehicle. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah. thanks so much, Ben, I appreciate it. Thank you a lot. So here's the interior, and one of the coolest features has got to be this panel up above your head. That's all your off-road controls. So you have off-road mode, waiting mode uh, this vehicle doesn't look like oh never mind it has the lockers there's your front and rear lockers those are optional but yes you can get lockers in the front and in the rear a couple other notes off-road mode not only does it tailor the drive to make sure you're ready for off-roading it turns off all the parking sensors and the pre-collision alert which I think is really smart and I think most brands should do. And then the waiting is even more interesting. They even turn off the cooling fan when you hit that waiting button so the fan doesn't get down in the water and throw it all over your engine. That's pretty cool. Now the other thing you're gonna notice, everything feels kind of utilitarian. Big kind of knobs and buttons, not a lot of touchscreen in here. Just that guy right there. And I think that's exactly what Ineos was going for. Now you'll recognize the BMW shifter right there from the powertrain and the uh, ZF 8 speed, or maybe it's a ZF shifter, but there you go. So a couple cues to remind you of where the powertrain comes from. And then definitely the best button in the whole vehicle has got to be right there. Toot toot! That little horn button with the bicycle on it is hilarious, but uh, also pretty neat. Now we can uh, jump in the back here too. So you'll see in the pickup truck, not a load of legroom. They certainly uh, seem to have cut into it a little bit to accommodate that long box on the back, but not too horrible. And you are still getting a plug down there. Two kilowatts you can get out of it, plus a couple of USB ports. Now this model doesn't have that cap on it, we get this cool uh, bed rack up here and I appreciate that too just for helping you tie down one extra spot you can actually strap things onto and then this truck also has that spare tire over there and then four tie down points, I failed to mention that too, you are getting one tie down point sort of hard point in each corner. Another thing this model has is this awesome roof rack on it, again this is an adventure vehicle, you're out 
off-roading for days at a time well yeah you got to bring some stuff with you so that roof rack is definitely going to come in handy as well now for tires these are all fitted with bf goodrich ko2s so a nice set of all-terrains as well and you know a good multi-purpose tire on road and off now, just like the standard Grenadier, there's two different versions of this Quartermaster. There's the Quartermaster Fieldmaster, and then the Quartermaster Trialmaster. And uh, the one you're looking at here is the Fieldmaster, which is a little bit more luxury focused. And one of the cool features here, you get safari windows in your roof there above the driver and passenger, and those are fully removable. So you don't just pop them open, you can actually remove that glass and have a bit of an open air experience. Not quite a Jeep Wrangler, but still a, a pretty cool feature. Now, another thing I'll show you on the interior here from the passenger side, crab handles everywhere. You get one beefy one right there in front of you and you get another nice one right there. So handy when you do head off road. Now, one thing I'll also point out, there's no handle in the back here for climbing in, which is interesting. And the engineers were telling me that it actually has to do with airbag design. They couldn't get that handle in there and still have the airbag work properly. And one quick note, kind of a correction. This is basically just a drop-in bed liner that's plastic. It's fairly thick and beefy, but underneath here is actually a steel bed. So this bed is steel, just with the plastic drop-in liner on top. Here's another neat feature on the Grenadier. You can actually get your frame finished all in red. So they actually set one up here at Goodwood so we could see it. I mean, that's pretty amazing. It's fun to be able to uh, have a, just a different frame color. Why does it always gotta be black? So if you want something a little more fun and red, Ineos will sell you that too. There's one other Ineos Grenadier here I have to show you and it's this guy and it's all because of this right here. That is a hydrogen fuel cell. And as you can see from back here, this is their hydrogen fuel cell demo vehicle. So that hydrogen fuel cell is actually also sourced from BMW, just like the diesel and the gas engine that goes in this car. And it's interesting, Ineos is, is trying to prove the business case for hydrogen. Now, that hydrogen fuel cell in this vehicle has a range of between 500 and 600 kilometers, so pretty far. You're getting about 300 horsepower, and there's actually two electric motors in the back, and then one electric motor in the front, and the torque is just off the charts. You're getting thousands of pound-feet. So all that stuff makes sense. Another thing Ineos said is with this setup, they can maintain the payload from the ICE vehicle. So unlike most EVs these days, which are really heavy, this thing actually weighs close to the same as the gas version. So everything there sounds good. The biggest issue, according to Ineos, is still infrastructure. They say that they could bring this to market anytime they wanted to, but they don't think the infrastructure is quite there yet to actually support it. And if people can't fill up their vehicles, well then of course they're not going to buy them. Now it's also important to point out that Ineos produces hydrogen. So they have a bit of an ulterior motive here. They want hydrogen to catch on because they want to sell hydrogen to you. But even still, it's really cool that they went ahead, did this fuel cell just to prove a point that in this sort of off-road utilitarian world, these hydrogen fuel cells can also be functional and uh, can actually add a lot of functionality to your vehicle as well. Well, folks, we are coming to the end of this one. And as you can see here at Goodwood, this Quartermaster has been popular. Everyone wants to check out a brand new truck. Now, I'm really curious to see how this thing does once it hits Canada and the USA. It's definitely a little bit expensive for the North American market. You're not going to be comparing this to basic trucks. But if you're looking at this thing compared to a TRD Pro or a Raptor or some of those top trim off-road trucks, the price is absolutely comparable. And this thing has all that great off-road gear as well. So yeah, I just can't wait to see how it plays out. But like I said, that's it for this one. Go in the comments now. Let me know what you think of the Grenadier Quartermaster. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.